So here we have a 2013 iMac. Uh, it came in here as a mail-in, and customer said that he's not able to install an operating system on it. So what I want to do is I want to turn it on and press and hold the option key on the keyboard. And look at this. The computer does have an EFI password. Uh, you will not be able to install any operating system on this machine until the EFI password is cleared. In order to fix this problem, what we have to do is we have to uh, remove the screen. We have to unsolder the chip. We're going to reprogram the chip using a programmer. We're going to solder the chip back. And after we do this, the computer should not ask us for any more passwords. The first thing I want to do is shut off the iMac, remove the cable then we're going to start removing all those the stuff that's on here it looks like this screen may have been open before and that's why the customer put all the tape on it so it doesn't fall out again okay so he's taken the screen out now we have to locate where the bios chip is holy it looks like uh, there's some work that was done to this board here. I see a lot of flux and a lot of solder uh, joints, a lot of solder blobs on here. Okay, I see signs of flux everywhere, especially, especially on this area right here. Look at this, solder blobs everywhere. And I'm not going to even touch this area. This has to do with the power supply. What we're going to do is remove the EFI password from this computer. And the EFI chip is on the main logic board right over here. Just clean the chip quick. I want to read the numbers on it. Let's go ahead and remove this chip. I'm going to do so using the low melt solder. I always avoid hot air whenever possible. So that's one side, and let's go ahead and do this side also. You see how it's moving now? So right now we can use a little bit of hot air to remove this bias chip. So by doing this, we avoided using very high temperatures on the board to remove the chip. That's it. We should keep in mind that pin number one is on the top left with the way I have the iMac pointed on the bench. Let's go ahead and just uh, fix the pads here so they are ready to accept the newly programmed chip.
that's it. So the pads are ready to accept a chip. All we have to do is just heat up the pads and put the chip back on. Let me just do a quick cleanup and move on with programming the chip. Everything looks perfect. Now I'm gonna take this out of the way. Put it right here. And what I wanna do is clean the solder that's on the chip. it now we're gonna clean those pins north is fixed Hi, hello. yes oh, I can't hear you. Let me come back. all right So price depends on the quality. So 129? Yes. Uh, what we're going to do is place the chip inside the adapter. This is the SOP8 adapter. And we have to make sure that pin 1 is located on the top left of the adapter. We have to press down on it. We put the chip and then we release. Let's go under the microscope to see how that is done. Okay, where's pin 1? We have to locate where pin 1 right here. So it's correct. Pin one is in the correct orientation. So I'm gonna press down on the adapter. I'm gonna put the chip and then release. So the chip is secured in place. This adapter has eight pins on the bottom and those eight pins are gonna fit in the first eight slots that you see on the programmer. And then like that. Let's go ahead and open the program to see if we can read the chip. The first thing we wanna do is uh, specify the type of chip that we have inside the socket here. Let's detect. And 046A right here. So that's the IC, select. And then what we're gonna do is read this chip. Right here, I just want to see if we are able to read it. Read. And it's reading the chip. So that tells us that the reader is able to see the chip and that's why it's able to read from the chip. Very good, so I just loaded the firmware that's on the chip right here. Every iMac or MacBook that we get into the shop we load and save the firmware. So in case we have to replace the firmware on future MacBooks or iMacs, we load the firmware and that will get rid of the password. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna back up the firmware that's inside the chip. So I'm gonna, the firmware is already loaded as you see. I'm gonna save it. EFI, iMac, dot bin. Okay, so we save the firmware in case something goes wrong with programming the firmware on here. Let's go ahead and load a clean firmware from a 2013 iMac that we previously saved. For simplicity, I got it saved right here. Okay, and we're gonna load it. We just loaded that firmware and now we're gonna program it onto that chip. But before we can program it, we have to erase the chip. So we're going to do erase, erase. Okay. So uh, erase is complete. Now let's go ahead and load the firmware onto the chip. We do this by 
pressing the program button and program. Now it's loading the clean firmware onto the chip. Once that is done, we're gonna solder the chip back on the iMac and that should get rid of the password. Almost done. I'm very sure I saved the clean firmware from a 2013 iMac that we previously got. So this firmware should not have any password. If for whatever reason this firmware has any issues, then of course the chip is not gonna work. So hopefully everything goes well. The firmware should be eight megabytes. So after the programming is done, we're gonna verify that we have eight megabytes loaded onto the chip. Okay, so that's it. The job is done. Let me save that firmware and verify that it's eight megabytes. So we're gonna do save. Then we're gonna save it as uh, one, two, three, just for testing purposes. And let's see, is this eight megabytes? And 8.0 megabytes, perfect. So what I'm going to do is release the IC by pressing down on the adapter and we can take that chip out. And we're gonna put that iMac back on the bench. As you recall, pin number one is on the top left. Pin number one should be here. Let's go ahead and add some plugs. So I have the hot air set at a low temperature of 300 degrees. Okay, let's press down on the chip and do this one more time. Just cleaning out the board. Okay, so the cables are plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn on the iMac. The first thing I wanna do is reset MVRAM. Anytime you reprogram a chip or you replace a chip, uh, it's a good idea to reset MVRAM so you can clear out whatever is in memory. So power on, and we're gonna press Command Option PR. Press and hold Command Option PR and wait until it chimes three times. So we're gonna wait, it's gonna chime. Keep pressing and holding. So it chimed the first time, it turns off. After 10, 15 seconds, it's gonna chime again. Keep holding command option PR. 
that's the second time one time is usually enough but there were times where we had to reset NVRAM three four times before the system worked the password was still stored in memory and the computer was kept prompting for an EFI password even though we reset the chip so by clearing NVRAM we clear everything in memory so that's the third time okay so I let go after the third time and the system is booting up just cover the customer's name and it loaded the computer is working now what I want to do, just as a second test, is I'm going to turn it on and press the Option key. If you remember, when we pressed the Option key at the beginning of the video, it showed us a lock and it prompted us to put it an EFI password. So let's go ahead and try that now. Power it on, press and hold the Option key, and it should not prompt us for a password. All right, so it did not prompt us for a password. These partitions are actually from our own external drive that we have plugged in the back, so we can test. And that's it. That's how you reset the password on the iMac 2013 21.5 inch model. As a matter of fact, the same process goes for any laptop, any computer, iMac, MacBook, Dell, Lenovo, whatever make a model you are working with, the same process applies to resetting the EFI password on that particular laptop or computer. Uh, you have to desolder the chip, reprogram the chip, put, uh, solder the chip back on, and everything should be clean. As long as you have a clean firmware to install back on that chip, then the computer should work like factory. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from this video. Go ahead and like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Don't forget to click on that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can get notified when we upload a new video. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video.